it's very important that men uh, normalize that and we allow ourselves to create a safe space between other men. Like, you, you can learn so much from just being real and exposing yourself, like being vulnerable. Even write down in, in, in a journal or diary, like the names of the individuals you know, when, type, when, when shit hits rock bottom, can I be vulnerable around this person? How many people here have actually watched a Goodman Factory podcast episode? Be honest. Okay. Love that, love All that. Right. Hey, we're looking like we Patrick. are here for the GMFX Raising Boys to Men live event. It's finally here. Everything we've been doing online for the past three years, we're bringing it to the physical. It's all started off with an idea. We're here, we're so happy to deliver. We just want to deliver an amazing performance. That's the aim for the day. That's what we're talking about. Obviously, boys need no introduction. The topic is the topic, but I'm going to let them take it away. Thanks a lot, guys. How many people here have actually watched a Goodman Factory podcast episode? Be honest. Okay. Love that. Love All right. That. So you know how vulnerable we can get in these episodes, right? It's a safe space, yeah? So we're going to have an honest conversation. Um, I like to throw a question out to the guys and then we see where we go with it. So um, I want to reflect on past relationships, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you're smiling already. <laughs> um, Thinking back on your past relationships, do you ever feel there was a time, whether in the relationship or outside the relationship, where you lost yourself? Uh, yeah, most definitely. But I didn't realise it until after the relationship. When I look back and I think, like, what happened to all my hobbies and, like, going to gym and, like, just making sure that I'm still that individual um, within the relationship. So... Yeah, like I realised after that, I need, to, I need to remember, like, who am I? So you feel you were someone before the relationship, someone else in the relationship, and then you was able to reflect back after? Yeah, and then realised that, okay, I'm me again. It's time to be me. What about yourself? <laughs> the same. Um, I was a certain person before I got into a relationship. Towards the latter end of that relationship, it just, yeah, went south really quick. And then... Let's say after the relationship, I really lost myself. Like proper, let's just say, rock bottom, depression. Like I just, I, I fully lost myself. That's the, that's the only way I can explain it. And it was it was difficult to see where the light at the end of the tunnel was. I couldn't see the end of the, that feeling. It was just like a bottomless pit, let's call it. It's a bad feeling. What about you, bro? You're not meant to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, 100%. Um, it's mad because I'll be in a relationship and I'll feel a certain way. The relationship will end and I'll say to myself, never again. That happens again. And then you start to be hard on yourself because you're like, how am I letting this happen again? I was so confident. And you even come out and try and do things like heal and look after yourself a bit more. But it's easy to do that outside of a relationship. The real work is when you're in it. Can you maintain who you were whilst in that relationship? And I think that's what I've struggled with. What do you think is the, like, the main... Oh, right, like... You're already asking questions, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this ain't no interview, bro. I'm like, this is a conversation, isn't it? But, yeah, what do you think is like, the main factor for like, why we tend to become like that while we're in a relationship? For me, it... Me, yeah? Uh, for me, I think it's more to do with... When I'm in a relationship, I feel my worth is based on what I can do for that person. Yeah, so I stop looking out for me. When I'm outside the relationship, I need to look after myself. I need to make sure I'm doing this. Getting in a relationship, I feel like where my purpose is to make sure they're good. Yeah, and by, by whatever means. You start neglecting yourself. 100%. Yes, yeah. so it's the same again. Um, you do kind of, I, I'm, I'm a people pleaser, especially if I'm with that person or if they're friends or for close family or whatever it is. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know why that's a thing. It's, I still kind of do it now in my current relationship. I definitely tried to please her, but she definitely appreciates it. That's the difference. But um, yeah, there's there's a, a level of 
I find I found my identity in trying to please you, and that was the only thing I knew, trying to make you happy and then forget about myself. It's mad. Do you feel when these things have happened, have you ever had a friend come to you and say, you know, you need to end that relationship, or that's not for you? <laughs> no, that's, I've never experienced that. But like a, a friend having <clears throat> to tell me that. But you know when you can feel energy, you can feel that like your friends or a friend may have something to say, but they're not saying it. Yeah. I can feel that energy. I can't explain what it is, but I know the feeling of like, there's things I want to say, but I'm just going to allow it. Are you, with, are you vocal though? If the shoe's on the other foot, then you feel like my a friend. Friends. Yeah. See, that's a good question because like, with me and my, my friends, I think when it comes to like partners, it's difficult to add your two pence. Because I think like we, I, I value what my friends have like have to say to me, and same vice versa. So um, you gotta be careful, like a bit sensitive. If we were to just free up the realness and say it as it is with someone's partner, it's a sticky one. I was gonna say, especially if they don't want to receive that information. Yeah. I would say my friends used to tell me like, you're not doing this anymore. You're not going gym. You're getting fat. <laughs> <laughs> you're just not doing a lot of Michael stuff. You're doing this. I don't even know who this person is. Um, it's not always that direct. I prefer it sometimes. Well, most of the time directly. I don't, I don't like people pretending or beating around the bush with me. I prefer it just straight up because there's a lot of experiences in my life where I've wanted an explanation and people have just been very um, fluffy with it or trying to sugarcoat it. I prefer it direct most of the time. But um, in my situation, they did tell me, like, like, I feel like you've lost yourself in a sense. Like, you're not the same. You're not doing this, you're not doing that. Like, I prefer it when you used to do this. Or even then, sometimes they'll give you subtle hints, like, oh, why don't you play football anymore? Why don't you do this? Why are you not coming gym with us? You yeah. know what I mean? So how have you been in receiving that? How was, how was I when I what? In, re in receiving that information. There's, it's, there's a little bit of denial because you're like, oh no, I am still doing this. You're not going gym, bro. You're not. You're definitely. You don't look like you go gym. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's not mean? happening. No, 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 no. You know what I mean? But um, uh, most of the time, I take that kind of information. I, I look inwards first. It's, it's easy to say that now at my age and I, with my experience. But at, sometimes in the past, there's been times where people have told me certain things, and I'm just like, you're a joke, man. <laughs> I'm definitely not that person. You're, that's you. <laughs> that's not me. But um. Yeah. Let me, let me ask a question, uh, Mark, a question here. Yeah. Um, why do, did you stop like playing football or playing football way less so, and like going to the gym? Did you no longer like, see the importance of doing it? Or uh... In my past relationship or past relationships, it was you're not spending enough time with me. Like, I felt guilty for wanting to do stuff that actually pleased me. Again, because I'm a people pleaser, I used to do things that will make you happy and in turn that will make me happy most of the time. And then the one thing, my one vice or I don't know, maybe I want to go gym, maybe I want to play football, maybe I want to play FIFA. If you're not allowing me to do one of those three things or all three things, I'm going to feel away. But sometimes I just find a way to just get over it. Oh, it's just, it's just football. It's just FIFA. It's just gym. But, you know, I remember someone saying to me that a relationship should be a part of your life. It shouldn't be your life. And I think that when I hear that, I'm like, you made the relationship your life. No, oh, 100%. 100%. I think I do that by nature as well. Get lost in it. Yeah. By nature. By nature. This <laughs> 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 like, my man. I used to hear quotes like that growing up here, and that would be alien to me. I think, which like, how? What do you mean? This is my this is my girl. What are you talking about? This is, that's, this is my life. That's my, that's that was my mindset. So wait. <laughs> does that does that kick in like that within weeks of that person being your girl? Like when when is that when's that Rizzy being revealed? Like Boy, before we even get together wow. <laughs> from the first DM. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, obviously, like for someone to become your missus, you know that like that intention is there from from the jump. Even while dating, it's like you're working towards being in a relationship. So mm. that 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 takes up it takes over. So when that woman becomes, like when that person becomes your woman, you're like, this is a different level now. Yeah. We need to change. I'm taking this more serious. Yeah. As you're supposed to. I'm comfortable. I right. Make, I'm comfortable. I want to make sure she's comfortable. Yeah. 
but I wouldn't ask her for 300 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> You set me Got up. Him. You set Got me up. Him. <laughs> you know what? So, Gav, let, let's go back to that. Let's go back to that. <laughs> so, asking my girl for three hundred pounds—it's not about not being comfortable. It's just six months in, it's not right. I shouldn't be in the relationship if I have to ask my girl for three hundred pounds. Who was you leaning on before you was in the relationship? Why is it now? It's your girl that you're leaning on that you got to ask. For £300. You know what I struggle with with that, right? Is if we've both got that mentality, it's dangerous. Yeah. yeah. So say for example, my girl said, you know, I'm not gonna ask my man, but I'll ask Dwayne. Hey. Hey. Well, Don't let me know. <laughs> Don't let me know. You see what I'm saying? Man? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what are you saying? <laughs> but there, so are there any Dwaynes in the say. audience, by the way? <laughs> As a wing, are you giving my girl 300 pounds? <laughs> now, you know what, yeah? Um, I feel like I've been in a similar scenario like that before, where someone tried to like guilt me, like, I'll ask someone else. N not the same, the 300 pounds, but similar. Um, the old me, the ego would be hurt, and I'd, I'd, I'd probably like do something quickly to be like, nah, nah the Wayne's not giving, like, helping you in this scenario. But the Rizzy now, Ask the Wayne. <laughs> I couldn't give a heck, honestly. If the Wayne's spotting you 300 pan, that's good for the Wayne. <laughs> I got a purpose, like, I'm trying to uh, build this community, so if you want to ask the Wayne 300 pan, go ahead. So I was, I was going to just add on, it, I've, I'm in a relationship, some of you know. Um, <laughs> he's, he's only said it three times today. You know? <laughs> and if, I've only just pointed out the missus as well, but I was going to say, um, the way I normally am, when I said out, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't ask for the 300 pound. But because of the relationship I'm in now and the communication is so clear, we discuss things before we go into a relationship, we discuss things during, and we're still discussing things going forward, if that makes sense, especially with finance, because I feel like finance in relationships is a very taboo subject. But um, we've had that discussion so openly that if, if she notices something or she, she, like, I've been in a situation where I've needed the funds, and she knows deep down I can't ask her. So she'll almost offer it, if that makes sense. And I've been in a situation where I've needed it. And you know what? She, she borrowed it to me and I've paid it back, if that makes sense. But she always thinks of it. And I, I started to feel um, the same way, where this is us together. We're trying to build yeah. together. Yeah. And that's what I rate about it. That's what I rate about it. She, she's, very, she's very like, oh, no, it's not just me, babe. Yeah, yeah. It's not just me. It's not just you. We're together. We're a one. Um, OK, I get it. I get it. So, <laughs> come, come on, obviously, she don't sound like that. But, know, I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I'll, I'll just rate the fact that we had that, um, that difficult conversation about finances and, and we have, we have a, like an open, almost like an open platform and a safe space to just discuss stuff like that. How? So when something does come up. How soon did you have that conversation? Before we, before we were together, we wow. had that conversation like, I'll say just before we became... Um, what's it called? Boy boyfriend and girlfriend. Like it was a. It's it's so weird because I'm not. I, I don't openly talk about my finances if that makes sense. Mm. And I don't think a lot of people do. Mm. Um, but even with their partner, it sounds mad when you say it out loud. But a lot of people don't have com like open conversations about finance. But we had it just before we got into a relationship. In fact, we discussed almost everything about our situations, mm. past relationships, children or no children. Obviously, I got two now. <laughs> but um. Yeah, we just had a lot of conversations and one of them was um, finance. And it was just, it's been easy since then. Sometimes I still fall into bad habits where I'd rather borrow it from a company or a friend than ask my missus, but that's, that's probably just a pride thing. But you know it always makes me feel comfortable. No, that, that's admirable because I've never, I, I don't recall in my 20s uh, getting into a relationship. So I had two long terms in my 20s. Um, I don't recall having those conversations before getting together. Like, and that's the difference, I'd say, between like, in our 30s, dating, when you're getting to know someone, I think it should be normalised to like, be able to talk about money. Like, like, what's wrong with talking about money? Like, let's be transparent about um, finances, the way you're at in life, savings, how much debt you have, mm. so we can work together. But in my 20s, I, don't, I, I, I never had those conversations, I'll be real. No, I think, I think it's definitely worth it. it just, it streamlines a lot of things. It cuts out and filters out a lot of nonsense as well and a lot of riffraff. 
I've just our relationship has gone from first seeing each other to a full on relationship like in almost no time at all. Let me ask you Trey, just going back, right? In those moments where you felt you lost yourself because of the relationship you was in, yeah? Do you feel like you loved that person? Upon reflection now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> is, it, who, is that Put ex? your hand up right no. now. Who, who said that? Who said that? Right now. Put your hand up. <laughs> that is Wait. funny. <laughs> but do you, feel, do you feel that, upon reflection, do you feel that where I was actually in love or coming away, you're like, that wasn't what I thought it was at all? Me personally, I, at the time, I thought it was love. And maybe it was a, because of how old we were, maybe it was love, but that was my definition of love at that time, maybe, or that period, or that season, or whatever you want to call it. But um, my age now, and the way I think about love and all the rest of it, I just I don't think that was love. I think that was initially lust, and then you kind of build some sort of I don't know. I, w not, I wouldn't call it a BTEC version of love, but, <laughs> but it wasn't like what I'm looking love. for and what I have now, basically. And that's no offense to her. She's a great person. She's a great girl, but it just wasn't. It just wasn't that. So you lost yourself you for someone you wasn't in love with, right? In a, in a sense, you wouldn't put it that way, yeah. No, I was definitely in love in my relationships. Certain? Hundred. How are you certain? No, hundred percent. How? <laughs> How are you certain? How? How are you certain? I, I don't. I don't like. I don't get into like relationships like i've not had like i don't i can't look back at my past and say oh i've had like been, like loads of experiences with different women like i've been in several relationships so when i'm in one it's like it's real it's actually real yeah but i don't mean you're in love but how that just means you're in a relationship i don't know how to put into words tell us about what rizzy feels when he's in love how did Rizzy know it's love? This isn't part of the script. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I think it's just it's that having that long term vision to be able to see like a future like and building and actively working towards that. That is that's my dedication to the person. Like if I'm I'm gi me giving you my energy and 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 visualizing building with you, that's that's it. That's well, we spoke before and you've admitted to having that saviour complex. Mm. So everything you just said there was about what you can give that person. Yeah? So you being in love shouldn't be dependent on what you're doing for that person, right? No, it shouldn't be. But I'm not going to lie, that's how I was raised, man. I learned that from my dad. Like, he would often remind like us of his love for us by the things he does for us. So that, that just transfers over to me. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm not. So what about you? Me, like, just touching on the dad thing. So my dad was never, like, when I say never around, was around, came to see me when I was nine. I remember him taking me chicken shop. Yeah. Got me a two piece. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to be around now. Like, I'm sorry. So in my eyes, I've got my dad and I've got a two piece. Like, this is, this is amazing. Yeah. I didn't see him again for seven years. Wow, that's nice. So like, but then when he came back in my life, he got my mobile number and just called me up. We started a relationship, would come and see me randomly, very inconsistent. But any time he would leave me, he'd be like, oh, I love you. I don't no, feel, when no anyone way. says I love you, does nothing to me now. Like, that, that's the tough. words, the words I love you doesn't hit me at all. Like, no, that's like, totally understandable. show me it, it hits yeah. me. That's, that's, that's why there's like love languages. Like people love to experience love in, we all, we all experience love in different ways. And like one thing I've learned, um, you know, having adult conversations before you actually get into a relationship with someone is to ask someone how they love to be, like to be loved. And um, also like ex expressing to the person that you're getting to know how you love to be loved. Because if words of affirmation is your, is your love language, Words of affirmations don't work for you. You but can't think, tell me, oh, I, lo I love you. you have to, they need to show you. I think even with that, yeah, like, if none of us could speak, would that person still know we love them? You see what I mean? 
<laughs> you can write it. Oh, bland as well. We're bland as well. I mean, well, people, yeah. don't, people don't write letters normally, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> but I hear that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think I remember times in my previous relationships where I thought I was in love, and it wasn't until that guy, green hoodie over there, <laughs> had a conversation with me. We was on holiday. I don't know if you remember, we was on holiday. And I've been in this relationship, it was a toxic relationship upon reflection for like four years. And every time I spoke to him, I didn't realize it, but I was saying the same thing. I was saying the same thing. Like months would pass and he's like, you know you're saying the same thing you've been saying for the past year. But in my mind, I wasn't. I was like, no, this is new. And then um, he asked me a question. He was like, what do you love about her? See that silence? That's how it was. I was like, oh, that, that personality, we get along, like we can make... He was like, no, what do you love about her? I couldn't answer that question. And that's when I realised I don't love this person. I'm just in it because maybe because of the length of time I've been in it, I feel like I'm more loyal to the length of time than I am my actual desire to be with her. And if we didn't have that, refle um, that conversation, that reflection would never have come. I would have I probably still been in it now, so... Like, can we just big up Michael, please? <laughs> you, need, you, need, you need a Mac in your life. Big up Michael <laughs> in the cup. No, but this is, why, that's, this is why it's important to, like, be able to have that safe space within your friendships. Like, earlier you asked me, um, do you and your friends feel, like, comfortable with, like, telling each other, like, oh, I'll be honest, not in all my friendships, only if, I'll say, like, 10% of the men in my life, we have that comfortability to talk like that with one another. But um, yeah, you, you need you need someone like that in your life. For me, that like, one of those people is um, Malik. Mm. So I, I remember a time when I, I gave him a call. For me to even reach out to him, looking back, I'm thinking, boy, I must have been down and out, <laughs> flat. But I, I just got back from um, uh, two, like two trips back to back, like LA and Dubai, and um, I was living Sorry. my best life. I, the reason why I have to express that is because I, like I was literally on a high, you know. And um, like this was months after a breakup, and I, ugh, boy, that whole summer I was living my best life. Then one day, <laughs> I think it was um, it was a land with like the we the weather. The weather was bad that day in London, like a rainy day, and then the de depression just slapped me across the face. Like I was down and out, and I called Malik. I was like, oh, bro, like, I'm feeling down today, man. I miss this girl, bro. So, yeah, yeah, you know, I know already. I've been, yeah, I've been, <laughs> yeah, I've been. I know. Already. I've been running away from 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 the pain for so long. Like I've been lying to myself. He humbled me quickly, man. Quick. <laughs> Said, bro, like in a in a healthy way. Like you know, you can get some men, men that are toxic. They'll tell you, yeah, bro, like why, why are you why are you bitch? You're soft, innit? Yeah. Yeah. No, he was just like, bro, like come on, man, like that. Pick yourself up, like. You've got your whole life ahead of you. Do you know who you are? Like he was like, bro, there's no time time for depression. There's so many things in life to be happy about, and just those words, like within 24 hours, boom, back to normal. I never had a day like that again in my life. Mr. 24 hour heart. I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> Mr. 24. Not letting it last longer than that. <laughs> That's a record, boy. <laughs> Man said 24 hours. Hey, Malik, help me. Yeah. <laughs> Man said, but I, but I get up. <laughs> that was it. 20, I've spent 48 hours on my bed looking at the ceiling, fully dressed. Jeez. Like, and you're Sorry. 24 hours. No, but that's when, not 48 hours. Like, I remember I reached this like low moment where like, I went into a depression. I think I was trying to get this person back. Like, the, you know when a relationship's ended and you should just take the blessing that it's ended? But it was like, no, like, we can make it work. We can make it work. And I realized she'd given her number out to someone. And, and at that point, that was like, all right, you know what? There's, like, the realization kicked in. Like, there's, no, there's no going back. And I just remember being in my bedroom, lying on my bed. And I was looking up at the ceiling. And an hour or two hours must have passed. And I just, you see, when you catch yourself, and I'm like, bro, you're fully dressed on, on, on your bed, just looking at the ceiling. Like, I realized what I'm doing. And it was like, no, 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 this needs to stop. But I'm someone that I lose weight. Like, I stop eating. Like, even my mum will be on me. Like, make sure you're eating. And I just don't want to do anything. But having certain people around me to identify that is so important. But also, be willing. those people be willing to sit with you in that space. 
Some people are trying to take you out of that space and it's like, no, I just need you to be here. Be with me in this space. What percentage of your friendships would you say like, are able to be with you? Like your male friendships? My male friendships, all of them, because I don't class someone as a friend if I can't have that with them. Mm. Yeah. I have yeah. people that I chat to and people that know me, but if I'm classing you as a friend, it's because you're going to have certain access to me and it's because I value your word. I think that's the problem we... we Paint every we we label everyone the same like yeah my friends yeah. like we almost want more friends do you know what I mean yeah I got bare friends you know nah I don't want bare friends yeah. I want real friends yeah. like look at social media now like yeah I got like a thousand followers like you don't know them like yeah. like it's true <laughs> so where's your low points been though when you really reflect back you said you said fat I'm not calling you fat but you said you said fat <laughs> yeah was was weight a thing where you looked at yourself and thought this is enough. I don't know. I don't know if it was weight. The, my lowest point, <laughs> I remember it, similar to there yours, yeah. But um, I can't remember what I'd done that day. And I, I just remember going home, I said hello to my mum. And she already knew, like, something was up. She, I don't know. I normally come in, like, happy, go to the fridge, check if anything's there. Yeah. Check if the door's working, close it, don't take anything out. But I remember going upstairs and I just remember just, every, just blacking out, sleeping in my jeans. Like, I always feel like... Levi's jeans. Yes. <laughs> it's a telltale sign when you're stressed. I, I don't know I don't know about the ladies, but as a man, if you fall asleep in jeans... Yeah. You're yeah. down. Yeah. It's, you are it's down. just a different... I woke up and I felt like... You know how uncomfortable was, you must be? Like, like, I mean, imagine the guy I, I, was that low. I didn't even think about anything else. I just remember falling asleep in jeans. Yeah. Crazy. And I woke up the next day, I was like, oh my gosh, they're still on. Like, I lost circulation in my bottom half. But <laughs> on a serious note, I just remember thinking... There's no, like, basically, I was like, oh, God, is me again. It was that kind of conversation. I was like, if you can get me out of this feeling, like what I'm feeling right now, honestly, I, I promise I won't go back. Or I promise I won't do this. And I promise I won't do that. And I, I, I labeled the things, including going back to the past relationship or going back to the ex. When I actually reflected on, um, like, basically, I come a long way. And then I look back and I was like, there was a there was a, a time where I could have gone back, and I just remember telling myself that I prayed to God for me to get out of that situation. I did not like that feeling. I didn't even I I wouldn't even wish that feeling upon my worst enemy, the way I felt that day, and for that period of time after that. But um, I literally I don't pray enough. But I I literally prayed and then I got out of it and I got to a, a point where I was just like wow, like I can laugh at that situation now. But when you're in it, it's so deep and there's no way out. You, it's almost like, um, what's the feeling? It's like you're drowning. Yeah. And the only way to get, like, get this over with is just to just breathe in the water, just take it in and it's over kind of thing. But um, I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, I've come so far. I can laugh at the situation now. I can even advise people. I can even advise my, um, advise my sons, my friends, my closest people. But um, yeah, that, <laughs> that sleeping in jeans point was like my, yeah, nah, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I need to find a way. You know what's so important? When we're praying, yeah, I think sometimes we, we have a vision of what that prayer being answered will look like. Yeah, and it's, it's not that, like, whenever I've been in low points, yeah, I remember 10 years when Tyler, when my youngest was first born, um, that evening I got a call from a friend that one of my sisters was now dating. Yeah, I call him a friend, but we don't talk anymore. And he was like, that side of the family want nothing to do with you. They don't believe you're their brother. They don't claim you. You need to stop trying to reach out. Yeah. So that evening, I remember getting to my mum's and I cried. Yeah. Let it out. Like, but it was one of them things where it was like this weight that I've been carrying because I've been reaching out, trying to make relationships work was off my shoulders. Yeah. I was crying. And within like three hours, Tyler's mum's waters broke. Yeah, and I realized at that point that's God's way of saying, forget about that family, focus on this. One door's closed, but look at what I'm opening for you. Yeah, 18 months ago when I first met you guys, yeah, I remember just coming out of a top, we was talking at the time, I was just coming out of this toxic relationship where I felt like I was competing with the baby father, yeah, but being manipulated at the same time, yeah. And it wasn't until I let go of that that I then met these guys. And I think sometimes we hold on to doors not realizing the next one won't open until you let go of that. And I just think it's so important. Until I let go of that door, because we was going back and forth for months, 
this door would never have opened. So I just think if anyone's going through something, understand, stop trying to open two doors at the same time. Let go of one for the other to open. Whew. That was powerful. I had to. It just, it just <laughs> powerful. Hit me. That was powerful. It hit me. So what's, what's helped you? What's helped you? When you've been going through certain, certain things and you feel like, you know what, I've lost myself. What's helped you get back to, back to Rizzy? Uh, good man factory. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> nah, for, for me, uh, I just go hard on, on, on work. Like, just focus on like, my work. Like, work becomes priority. And then I get obsessed with it. Like, that's me now, like, obsessed with my, my craft. Like the things that I'm doing, the things that I'm working on, um, that's my getaway from what I call nonsense, which is distractions, which is like things that don't serve me. So yeah, that's what helps. And and also spending time with uh, my friends uh, without alcohol, because alcohol doesn't solve anything. It's just a mask. Like going out and having a great time drinking is not an escape. So I've, I've had to learn how to escape distractions and pain without wearing that mask of like alcohol and yeah, just things that, that a healthy way of moving on, like distracting myself with things that, that are purposeful. Keyword, distractions. Mm. Right. So if we think about self-love, self-care, yeah, making sure you're good, not you're distracted, but you're good. Mm. What do you do? Uh, gym, going working out. That's that's for me. It's been game changer. I can't even explain to you how helpful going to the gym, doing classes like yoga, Pilates classes, uh, helps because that like, for me, I don't go gym with the goal of like oh, I want my body to be dead like this. He was me. doing press ups backstage, by the way. I was, I, I just, was. I <laughs> you want to add that one? No, for, this, for, this, for the sake best, of context, yeah. they were both doing press ups backstage. <laughs> Don't let him make it seem as if it was just one. Like they were both doing it. They were both doing it. <laughs> no, yeah, no, you know what? It's, but for me, it's more of a mental thing. Like the feeling that I get after I come out of the gym, it's like I've, all the negativity that's trapped in my body, like all the blockages has, have been removed, that like I feel relieved. Like I feel like nothing can bother me when I. That, that walk home from the gym, like, I feel cool, like nothing can, can trigger me. So, um, yeah, that's, 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 that's been really helpful for me. Do you think, in terms of like self-love and self-care, men are aware of it as much as women are? I, I personally, I don't, maybe nowadays, but it wasn't a conversation or it wasn't a thing. Um, we talk about looking after ourselves or self-care as a, almost like an umbrella term or um, a, a term that we all use nowadays. But realistically, I was never, obviously my dad wasn't there for the majority of my life, but there was no, also when you, in my environment, sorry, and in school and on TV, it was never men getting trims or looking after their beard or looking after their skin. It was just, if you ain't got scars on your face, or you ain't grazed your knee, you're not a man almost. That's the way I was always viewed it from that age. But as I've got older, I, I've even when I give myself a trim, like I just it's very th therapeutic for me. It's almost like therapy for me. Like I love it. It just it keeps me almost grounded. Like I can't I can't even explain it. I used to um, even on YouTube I used to watch like people get like normal fades, like a drop fade, and I'll just be staring at the screen. Oh my gosh, look at the way he's flicking his wrist. <laughs> like I used to just love it. So um, that's one of the things that I used to basically take care of myself and shape my beard up. I trim little hairs that are flying around. I go to the gym. I try. Well, now because I'm in a relationship, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got I'm happy. I'm in a good relationship, so I, I, don't, I haven't been going to gym properly. But explain um, that. Explain that. Explain. That. I was about well, to you know say, is, you know, you said these are, say, because yeah, I'm in a good we spoke relationship. About losing I don't yourself. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. I get. What's going like, on, Mac? I, don't get me wrong. <laughs> like most of the, that, there was a point where I only went gym because I was stressed, and like you said, it, it was to like get rid of any any like negative energy or take my anger out or frustration out in the gym. And then I can focus, I can basically reshuffle and then focus. But because I've been so comfortable, I think it's almost complacency as well in my current relationship. I've just been like, D I'm so happy. I don't even need, what am I trying to impress? So wait, do you, feel you like, do you feel like you went gym to get the body, to get your woman? 
and then said, now I've got my woman. Yeah. I don't need no, no it, it, it sounds like that, but it's never that. <laughs> it, I'll, I'll be honest, it does sound like that, but it's never that. It's, it's more like, she just makes me feel comfortable. Oh, you don't need to do that. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm being lazy. Maybe it's because, oh, you know what? I'd rather just sit down and watch Netflix than go and bang weights, mm. in a sense. But um, Does she make you feel safe? Yeah. Mm. But she makes me, well, she makes me feel comfortable. And then obviously I've taken it as being too comfortable. So there's no need for me to, I don't know. There's no um, trauma response, let's call it. There's no, there's nothing to make me. Oh, I need to, I need to stay in check, or I need to focus on this. I'm just very comfortable. I don't really, with a lot of things, I prefer not to be comfortable. Mm. But in this scenario, I don't mind it. But I think feeling safe from our discussions, I think Yaz makes you feel very safe. Yeah, 100%. in a sense of safe enough to be whoever you are, but also go through whatever you're going through. And know that, you know what, it doesn't change how someone looks at you. Mm. I think me and you have both been in situations where we felt like if we can't do this, it changes how this person views us. And then it just encourages us to have to work harder or do more. And I think we just have to be mindful about that. We should all be with people that we feel, if I am going through a financial difficulty, it's not going to change the way this person looks at me. I'm okay to ask this person because you know what, I know she's got me. And if we're calling people our, our girls or our guys and we can't turn to them at certain times, you have to really question what that relationship is meaning to you. Like where you're really trying to go with that person. Because we put dates and times up, you know what, uh, three months is too soon to allow someone to meet your kid. Like it has to be a year. You know what, six months is too soon for someone to ask money. It has to be, like it's how you feel. It's how that person has made you feel, how safe that person has made you feel, how comfortable you are in that relationship. So I just think we all need to be mindful of that. But do you want to wrap it up and say anything to the audience? I was just going to quickly ask you. I had, had to. <laughs> I was going to quickly ask, ask you about the 300 pounds. Oh, oh, God. Are you taking the 300 pounds? Am I taking it? Not taking it, but is, is the 300 pounds something that you go, hey, babes, obviously, like, man's in a bit of a, a sticky one. Like, I, think we, I think what everyone was saying, was looking at, yeah, is 300 pounds. Like, if I'm having to borrow 300 pounds, that means I'm out, yeah? Like, to me, I could have 3K in my, ba in my bank and something's happened, yeah? the car engine's gone or something mad has happened and I've got to pay two and a half grand to something and something else is coming out at the same time. And you know what, babe? I just need 300 pounds to get me through till Friday, yeah? I'm asking because that's that's my person. That's That to me is my person. And, if, and you know what? If she looks at me weird or holds that against me, you're not my person. Yeah, 100, 100. I rate that still. Yeah, no, I hear that. And that's... <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know what it is, yeah? This is what I love about Good Man Factory, yeah, is that, that we're, all, we're, we're all very different people and like, we can still come together and, and talk and embrace each other. Like, I don't look at him like there's a problem with you for being that way. That's who you are. Like, you feel like I should be able to turn around to my partner and ask that. I've been in a scenario where I've had to ask a partner to borrow me money and then I run it back to them. But just coming out of experiences, I'm now in a, in, a, in a place where if I'm in that scenario, I'll probably like self-sabotage and I'm out of the relationship because I need to like get my money up before I shouldn't be in that scenario in a relationship. I, would li I literally feel like, nah, I shouldn't be in this relationship if I have to turn around to my partner to ask for the money. I know we've got to wrap up. And I know, I know Quick question on that. Yeah. Yeah, go on. You mentioned that you've been in that situation before. And it almost sounds like because of that, it wasn't. It wasn't six months into the relationship, though. But it, it almost feels like maybe I'm wrong. Something happened there mm. with that money, or the way that that person made you feel, or or something. Because it seems like that scenario has now changed you mm. going forward. So almost like the woman you get with is almost being punished because of what another woman done. So me not asking her for 300 pounds, is that really punishing her? No, but I'm saying if the way you look at that woman is based on how another woman treated it's, you... It's not, uh, so it's, it's got... You know what? It's actually nothing to do with uh, with how I was treated in a previous relationship. It's just more... Something happened though, isn't it? No, no nothing happened. It was just like a, a self-realisation that as a man, I should not be asking my partner to borrow me money. And And even before I asked my partner for money... I'm going to turn to the whole good man community 
and ask Daps or you or you for three hundred pound before I ask my partner for three hundred pound. Got you, bro. Got you, bro. Yeah, cheers, cheers, Trust cheers. Me, it's pattern, it's pattern, it's pattern. <laughs> so yeah, it's like I've got so many people to lean on. Like if I'm if I can't ask you, man, and I have to ask my girl first. Hey, I'm down bad. <laughs> I'm down bad. I'm just saying. I'm just being real. I'm just being for real. That's just like I should be able to turn to so many other people before my partner. I think six months into a relationship. To express that level of vulnerability, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Do you want to say? Just, just around it. Oh, well, off, off topic. Just around it. Up. Yeah. Um, well, in terms of heartbreak, first of all, it can happen to the best of us. Always think that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. No matter how far it looks, or how matter, no matter how small that light at the end of the tunnel looks. There is always one. You should always reach for it. And if you need to speak to someone, it doesn't matter who it is. It could be your closest people. It could be, I don't know, family, friends, loved ones. Even if you look at videos, because I think at one point I was I looked at some videos, like motivational videos or um, how to get over heartbreak. I think I typed in on YouTube. Imagine, there's some great videos out there. <laughs> some great videos out there as well. <laughs> when but, a man um, goes for a breakup, his YouTube history I, is going to be mad. Fam, yeah. Crazy. There's a, there's a particular time in a certain time of year that I... I was literally Googling stuff like that or how to stay motivated and all the rest of it. But in all seriousness, there's just, if, if, if you're not the kind of person that can deal with it alone, then definitely seek, not necessarily help, but definitely seek or find someone to, to share that with. Or if you want someone to listen, speak to the person that's going to listen. If you want someone to give you feedback or some advice, then speak to someone that will give you feedback and advice. That's what I can. That's all I can say. Yeah. There is no, nah, but I, I definitely believe it's like it's very important to have that type of relationship, like filter through the friendships that you you know you can't be like open and create a safe space. So you know how you said that you, all your friends you're able to have that type of relationship where you can open up. I would admit I don't have that with all my friends, and that's because I would say I have a lot of like uh, acquaintances that are classed as friends. That realistically, like we don't have that safe space between us. We just go way back. Like we went, had it, we went on holiday together in 2016, mm. and that's it, you know. But like, it's not even cool between us for me to open up to you. So I think it's very important to like filter through and like even write down in in, in a journal or diary like the names of the individuals you know. When tap when when shit hits rock bottom, can I? be vulnerable around this person. Um, it's very important that men uh, normalize that and we allow ourselves to create a safe space between other men. Like, you, you can learn so much from just being real and exposing yourself, like being vulnerable. And um, I just want to give a, a, a big thanks to the both of you that we're able to create this space where we can be vulnerable online and in front of a live audience. So yeah, man, it's wonderful. I think for me, that this is the power of redirection, yeah? And I was thinking about this the other day, like I was driving my car and the sat-nav redirected me, right? And I had two options then. I could even be stubborn and say, you know, oh, you know what, I know where I'm going, yeah? But I trusted in the sat-nav to say, you know what, it must know something I don't, yeah? It knows, you know what, there's traffic there or there's a hazard or there's something and this is a better way to go. And I think whether you believe in God or the universe, Sometimes you're being redirected, but you're too stubborn to understand that. And you're so focused on, no, you know what, this is the person for me, or you know what, this is the job for me, or this is the situation, when in reality, you have to trust that redirection. And I think this wouldn't have happened if I didn't trust that I was being redirected and put trust in what, we've, what we had and what we built. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Mandela. That's that's walk walk by faith and not by sight. I love that. Mm. There we go. Say amen. amen. <laughs> Church vibes. <laughs> Guys, one more time, please. Let's give it up for the entire panel. Thank you, there. thank you so much. We appreciate you, all of you. Thank you so much for coming.